to talk now about filters, mixins, and custom directives. These are like, you know, things that are slightly more, you know, wide, you know, wider spread of view. You could actually be a, you know, view application developer for a while without encountering these or needing them necessarily, but it's also one of those you don't reach for what you don't know kind of situations because they are really useful, um, so, uh, but each one of them doesn't take up an entire course. So we're going to go through three things. They're not related to each other. They're just three different things that are nice and kind of smaller that you should be aware of when working with Vue. I think they're really great. So we'll, we'll talk about filters first. Um, Filters, despite their name, are not good for filtering content like we did with a computed value. You know, like you have like an input where you're writing something, don't use a filter for that. Use a computed value for that. Um, filters, the first thing to understand about them is that they don't alter the data and they're not a replacement for methods. Uh, filters don't transform the data, they just transform the output that the user sees. So it's just for making small tweaks to the way that something looks in some sort of layout form. So I'll give you an example. Um, well, actually, first let's talk about how we're going to register a new filter. So if we're going to globally create a filter so that we can use it anywhere, we would say view.filter. And this would be you know, in our um, main.js file right before the view instance. We'd say view.filter, filter name, function value, and return. We're, I'll go over what what we're going to use this like with demos in just a second. Uh, we can also register them locally on the component itself, uh, just the way that you do like methods or computed values and say filters, pass in the filter name, uh, use the filter name and then pass in a value and, you, and return, you have to return it. So the way that we use it is like this. Um, usually in these mustache templates, we're just writing data. Uh, we're writing whatever that is. Uh, we'd create a pipe and then we'd say the filter. So an example of that would be something like text and capitalize. So capitalize is an example of when you'd use a filter. You'd, you're not transforming the data, you're leaving the data how it is, but you're just making sure that everything is formatted correctly and everything that shows up is going to be capitalized. Um, I made like a really simple tip calculator. So we have a customer total one, and that's some value you came from somewhere. Um, and we have filters here. We have tip 15, so 15%. We're passing in the value and returning, you know, the value times uh, 0.15 to fix two. And then in our HTML, 15 is going to be customer total one pipe um, tip 15. So it would look like that. So if we look at the demo here, we've got a tip calculator. This is outputting that first one. And then we've got a few different filters. We've got tip 15, tip 20, tip 25. It's repetitive. We'd usually probably use a method and then bring that into the filter or something like that. Um, but for the purposes of demo, we just have a bunch of filters here that we're using again and again. And we've got customer total one. So we're not actually changing anything about that customer total. We're just making changing it a little bit so that we can output it so that the user can see a different view of that. So it's a little, you know, that's kind of similar to computed values, but computed values do something totally different. This is just presentational. Could you use this like for formatting dates and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. That's per a perfect example. Formatting dates. Um, uh, you know, we're going to do an exercise later where you make you know first, second, third, fourth. You know, you create the you know based on the number. Um, so we can also chain filters. So if we have something like this, um, this data, we're going to say it's going to say the data, and then it's going to be filter A and filter B, and the first one will be applied first, and the second one will be applied uh, after. And so that kind of is important when you get into something like this, where we've got the original number, plus 5 is 7, times 2 is 4, and then plus 5 then times 2 is 14, but times 2 plus 5 is 9. So that, you know, the order of operations there kind of matters. You can pass arguments as well if you need to. So um, we are always going to pass the value in because we're going to change that value. Um, so what will end up happening is we'll say filters, filter name, the value, argument one, and then argument two. 
Filter sounds like it would good, like I said before, it would be good to filter a lot of data, but filters are rerun on every single update. So it's better to use computed properties for logic where you're filtering down a certain amount of things. The only thing that's filtering about filters is the name. <laughs> so don't so don't get confused there. All right, that's that's all about filters. That's it. That's all we've got. So 